again and just start from there and just uh, record about 40 minutes of this so okay Hold okay on. Um, hey guys this is a uh, pill eater I'm joined today is with Shane scalp hi Shane how you doing pill eater what's going on great I had a talk uh, recently with uh, Nicolete or Nico or I always butcher yeah, yeah. her name for some reason, but um, I, I, she was on Twitter as well, but she actually um, recommended you as well, and uh, I haven't had time to look over your stuff, but you're on Twitter as well, right? Um, yeah, sometimes I am. And you have a YouTube as too? Um, I do, but I haven't updated on that since God knows who knows, you know, how long, so... <laughs> Yeah, I so I guess technically I have a YouTube, but yeah, I haven't done anything on there in a long time. So, for I guess um, for most people who do not know, how would you introduce yourself to someone who just doesn't know what you're about and what exactly do you do on Twitter and other spheres of the internet? Okay, well, first and foremost, I consider myself a libertarian, and. Whenever I am on Twitter, I, um, you know, I just post whatever I, you know, I like or whatever I find funny. I, I actually post more uh, funny stuff than anything uh, politically. Um, but whenever it is political, it's usually you know something that's uh, that I consider myself like really stupid or retarded or anti-SJW or, um, I mean, even if it's like anti-right wing or anti-left wing, just anything that I think is you know. I, I just find it kind of ridiculous because I honestly find things that are stupid on both, you know, like I guess on the left and the right. So, you know, it's just whatever I find that I deem important or, you know, relevant. Six hours ago, you wrote a tweet that said, uh, I can't wait to get a job so that people will look through my <laughs> tweets to find something <laughs> terrible. I say, I have to agree yeah. with you because yeah. in my yeah. own environment, uh, I've only had one case of an IRL friend, confront me about my internet activity but what you do on the internet i think should be a joke i think we're in that time where um i guess there's some people who take the internet way too seriously it could affect where you work out wh wh i mean where you work in case if there's any public relations that you're that troll on twitter and if you work for that phone company they don't want you but i i don't know right. i have never had a you know, I, it's um, the the other day when I I, I had the podcast, um, the Hapa Reddit out of all places, a very SJW place. Um, of course, posted, kind of advertised for my own podcast, but I thought it was really creepy because the the user said, uh, "Bonus, uh, Pill Eater plans to teach in Japan next year." When I found that's, uh, it's kind of I don't know. It's just like uh, okay, and. Uh, no, you know, I, I'm just saying that's kind of weird that they, they go out their way of uh, doing that. I don't know if you had any uh, mm. background with SJWs and creeps on the internet, but... Not not personally, but uh, I always do find it... like. The, and, but kind of going back to the, the reason why I tweeted that was because I, I see, and I guess you kind of... Uh, I'm sure you've seen it as well, but whenever you see... Um, you know, like a politician, they're running for mayor or something, and they go, oh, man, you see what they said in 2011? How terrible. And, and you know, now it's apparently relevant six years later, you know, here in 2017, you know, so because, you know, obviously what happened back in, you know, 1980s is obviously going to be relevant now. So that's the reason why I said it, it was kind of like a tongue in cheek, kind of a joke, in, you know, on that, um, you know, so I was just kind of making fun of that whole, 
you know, oh my God, he tweeted something about gays. Oh my God, you know, you know, something stupid like that, you know. So that's the that's the kind of the reason why I I tweeted that. I just thought it was a funny little joke. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I see. I actually see on your Twitter you have a a, a pinned video that you've done and. Um... You, yes. Have you recently been doing YouTube videos, or do you plan on making well, a YouTube channel? Or yeah, I, I do plan on doing YouTube, but uh, so far I've just been kind of doing uh, videos for uh, Twitter, and I've only done in like three or four, so I've, it's fairly new. Uh, but that particular one that you're uh, referring to, the pinned mm-hmm. uh, tweet, is about <laughs> this. Um, I, I think her name's Miss. Uh, it's Miss Barr. I can't remember her first name, but it's Miss Barr, and she. I guess it's like her first article for New York Times. And she's like, man, I gotta think of something really important to say. Oh, I got these white men need to stop being in movies, and, you know. And she, in the in, in, in the video, I don't know if you if you. Um, I have not seen it. Yeah. Well, what I basically say is that she answers her own question, like, why are these white men still in movies? Well, you just said in the in, you know in your article that you know there are more men than women who are writers, more men who are producers and directors. So of course. A man's gonna know more about the, you know, about a male perspective and a, and a male experience than a woman experience because you're probably gonna make fun of, you know, a man talking about a woman because they don't know about that experience as well as a woman. You know, it's like it's like the great Bill Burr says. You know, it's like if I wrote a book, the third trimester and what to expect. I'm not gonna know what the hell, you know, you know what it's like to be pregnant. You know, so she basically answered her own question in that article, and so I was just like. Now, I was just basically kind of making fun of her on that, you know, just, you know, like, what was the point of this whole article if you just answered your own question? Like, are you like, are you being serious here or are you like trolling or what's going on here? And I get it. You're the New York Times. You know, this is big time or whatever. You know, well, according to Trump, maybe not. But, you know, I, I don't know. I just thought it was a funny little video that I made. Have you had a chance to see Dunkirk? Because uh, I think in one of such publications like The Week, they say, yes, yes. oh, it's just white people. There's no non-colors. I think that movie is yes, making grounds yes, on Kirk. Yes, I have seen that movie, and I have seen those articles. And again, I just want to like hang myself when I see these ridiculous, stupid articles. And why aren't there any black people that were fighting in the 1940s? I don't know. Maybe because it was in England, and there were more white people in that area. I don't know. I mean, if we were talking about Africa, then of course you're going to, you know, well, maybe not South Africa, but... You know, in like Chad or in Congo, of course, you're going to see more black people in those areas. You know, I apologize that geography isn't your sport, hey, you know, but <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I, I know what you're talking about that whole, I don't know. I, it's like they don't have anything to talk about anymore. You know, they're trying to make something, you know, they're trying to make something like stick. And this isn't going to stick because Dunkirk's the big movie now. So I don't know. How long have you been a uh, libertarian? And uh, do you still you know, consider yourself very open with the libertarian, um, movement and do you, do you, what do you think is, you know, the future of libertarianism or different political movements per se? Well, to be completely honest, I'm fairly new to, to it and I have to give, uh, all the credit to Dave Smith. He's a comedian up in New York in, in that, uh, New York area. He has a podcast called part of the problem. And I listen to that podcast religiously now. And every time I, I listen to it, I learn, I learn something new. I learn a new aspect of libertarianism. You know, because even though I do consider myself a libertarian, I wouldn't say I'm like 100% because I still want to learn more about that aspect of that political spectrum because I've been on the left side and I've been on the conservative side. And each side, I'm just like, you know, there are good points on each one, but at, this, at the end of the day, I'm just, you know, it doesn't make like it, libertarian is and makes more sense to me now because I feel like, you know, I don't want government to tell me what, you know, what to do. I don't want them to tell me what to do with my body. I get it. It's a woman issue mostly, but I don't want someone to tell me I'm a dude. I, you know, this is what you need with your body or, you know, what you need to do with my, you know, my money or whatever, you know, like taxation is theft is the big thing. And I, I totally agree with that. And I, and, and I also agree that, you know, um, prisons are way overcrowded, and we need, we, you know, the drug war is, is ridiculous and in, 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 a, in a, a false war, I think, because you know, we have alcohol. People drink alcohol, you know, all the time. You know, obviously for twenty one, but you can't, you know, you can't snort a little coke, 
You know, like which one do you think is more dangerous? Do you think cocaine is more dangerous or do you think alcohol is more dangerous? You know, uh, I, I, yeah, I would just say alcohol simply because people consume it more. But uh, I, I, know right. where I know where you're coming from that end. So yeah. Whatever what you want well, to take on that. And you, and you obviously know about, you know, the 18th Amendment being, you know, the prohibition of alcohol. And then literally the 21st Amendment is repealing the 18th Amendment because that amendment didn't work out too well because they, they, they illegalized alcohol. And then all of a sudden, you know, oh, people are still going to drink alcohol. So I guess we might as well make it legal now. And so, you know, it, it kind of that's kind of the thing with with drugs now is that the drug wars is costing money, costing lives, and overcrowding the prison. Because when you think about it, someone gets put gets uh, put in jail for marijuana. You know, they have a little little a little tiny you know sliver of marijuana, and they get like twenty years. And then you see people who like manslaughter a child, and they only get five. Like how like how does that make any sense at all? Someone literally almost killing a child, they get a smaller sentence than, oh, you have like a tiny little puff of a green leaf. You know, it, I don't know, this, this that whole thing doesn't make any sense to me. Like the, the crime needs to fit, you know, uh, or the time needs to fit the crime basically. And I honestly don't, you know, I'm, I'm for legalizing marijuana because I just, it doesn't, you know, I don't know. I, I, medical marijuana is, you know, it seems smart to me too, but. I don't know, I'm still researching on that, but just that whole incarceration thing is just kind of ridiculous to me. Yeah, for the, the libertarian part, I can only say that my education in libertarianism is just my love for Murray Rothbard. Um, yeah. I remember reading Egalitarianism as a Revolt Against Nature uh, a mm -hmm. few years back, and I love that. But um, I can't really say much about like the Australian the Austrian school like von Mises or something like that, or even... I guess in a lighter extent, I will admit I did vote for Gary Johnson a, a few years ago. Oh, no. I, 2012. <laughs> I, that was my first first time I ever voted. I voted for Gary Johnson in 2012. Oh, my goodness. But really? being young wow. and naive, you know, you, you, yeah. you want something to happen. But um, from what I've seen, especially on the Internet, um, uh, especially in the YouTube sphere, there's now this kind of movement from libertarianism to the alt right, or you know, and so there's either these whole, I guess you want to call it red pilled movements of people who mm -hmm. are just pretty much anti liberalism and against the whole liberal establishment. Um, what, what do you think about the the alt right and some of these red or uh, um, these red pilled uh, YouTube personalities uh, or Twitter personalities? Uh, and do you follow any of those people? Well. The alt right, I'll give the alt right a little credit because at least with the alt right, they'll have a dialogue with people that they know they don't agree with. Unlike most, some of the left, they'll just completely shun you. Like, oh, you don't, you know, that one topic I like, you don't, you don't believe in that. Well, I'm not going to talk to you. But at least with the alt right, like Richard Spencer actually did talk with Dave Smith, who again, you know, going back to that podcast, they did an episode together. And of course, they don't agree on everything, but they still had a dialogue and they still talked and, you know, wanted to, you know, they wanted to get to know a little more about, you know, what their side of the argument was all about, you know. So I do give them that credit in terms of they're at least able to have an open and honest dialogue on, you know, OK, well, because a lot of what the alt-right says and especially like the white nationalists, they say a lot of the same things that the Black Lives Matter movement says, because if you just took white and you put black in, in that wherever they say white, you just put black in it. It kind of it's almost the same, you know. So, you know, because obviously Black Lives Matter, you know, they're talking about you know police brutality and you know how blacks need to you know rise up and all that stuff. Well, the white you know white nationalists and the alt right movement for the most part kind of say the same thing. I mean, not the police brutality part, but the whole you know you know the whites need to stick up for each other and you know we need to preserve the white race and all that. I mean, wouldn't you kind of agree that they kind of sound the same? Well, yeah, it's the whole ethno-nationalist, quote-unquote, idea. Yes. The identity politics. Uh, you might find a Wikipedia article mm -hmm. on that. Because yeah. I, I don't think Black Lives Matter would be in favor of ethno-nationalism. But again, it's a very popular uh, ideal going on that if there's something after postmodernism, it's certainly um, this ethno-nationalism. And the ideal is that people will break, there'll be a... You know, quote unquote, white ethno state, black ethno state, right. Asian ethno state, and I, I've said this uh, previously that if that was to uh, come true, there there would have to be some 
mul- multiple bicultural ethno states. If you yeah. to follow that, you can have the mulatto white black state, which could be you know the size of an Amish community or even the Eurasian community over there. But the point right. is that people belong with people like themselves, and we belong to home. But again, uh, that ideal, if it was to ha- if, if white nationalism or the alt right was to take control the next day, then obviously. Um, that would have to come into effect. Otherwise, they're going to do something of the amnesty argument and say, well, if you're, uh, if you're Eurasian, you're white or Asian, you got to choose a side, white or Asian. But I do have friends who would pretty much choose a third position side, at least. Um, and I think that has a lot of uh, complications to that. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, the whole uh, Eurasian thing, you like... Especially like all of the uh, I don't know the, like the Arhapa thing that you that you mentioned as well about you know how they hate I don't know Asian male white female or something or no I mean the white male, the Asian other female, opposite. excuse me yeah 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 excuse me that's 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 horrible like a white man and an Asian woman how dare you but an Asian man uh, and a white female oh have at it oh yeah you can fucking be white you was want gonna, awesome I love yeah. you. I think that's so confusing because I wait. I thought it produces the same results, but yeah. Yeah. As I said before, um, yeah, I, I don't like bringing up the Happy Reddit because I'm pretty sure they'll be following every. Uh, they're, they're they're basically the best audience I have, so at least I want to proselytize them onto a different thing. But uh, I guess that's what you happen when you have Reddit. You get a giant hug box and a bunch of SJWs, and they'll fight over every, anything, even how convoluted their arguments are. So. Yeah, and I and I am a product of a uh, you know white father and an Asian mother. So how dare I, you know, if I had to choose a race, I just had to choose half Asian. You know, I didn't, you know, I could have chosen black or Hispanic, but I had to be Asian. So excuse me, I apologize. Well, I get called Elliot Rogers all the time, so I guess that's the new thing going around. But um, really, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I guess that's that's the worst thing you could be, right, Elliot Rogers? But um, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot worse things they can call you. <laughs> Well, um, I, again, with this whole alt-right sphere that's happening, mm-hmm. I mean, for, for, for YouTubers, I just want to know, um, because everybody, wa- everybody watches YouTube now, nowadays, yeah. but do you, ha- do you have favorite yeah. subscribers or YouTube personalities that you listen to or comment on? Um, yeah, I know you asked this before, so I apologize I didn't answer it uh, before, but um, I, I do like... Um, I like I like Gavin McGinnis. I like that guy T. I like uh, some black guy. Um, I also sometimes list, uh, listen and watch. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones I listen to. Um, like it's funny because like those are the ones that I said like political. Like I, sometimes I watch Lauren Southern too, but I actually watch more like comedy stuff. Like, I, I watch more red letter media. And I'll watch, um, you know, just other stuff like that. But in terms of, like, the political stuff, like I said before, you know, that guy T, Gavin McInnes, Mm -hmm. uh, some black guy. um, Like, that guy T really fascinates me because every time I watch one of his videos or I I look at one of his tweets, I go, I think I I I gained five IQ points or I may have lost five IQ points because, A, he's either way too smart for me or, B, I'm just that retarded. I don't understand what he's saying, you know, so – but I love that guy. You know, I'd love to meet him someday. But um, his videos are always so articulate. And every time I, I watch one of his videos, I'm just like, wow, I think I, you know, he, he, he does a really good job on how he can, you know, kind of uh, present his argument on something, you know. And especially him being a black guy. I mean, he's not a liberal, you know, or a left wing Democrat or whatever. So, I mean, he's already, you know, uh, kind of defeat, defeated that whole narrative of how, you know, a black guy has to be on the Democrat, you know, I have to vote for Hillary Clinton kind of a person, you know. Um, but yeah, I, I love that guy. And then, then going with uh, Gavin McGinnis, I just, I just find him hilarious. I don't agree with him 100%, but it, I, the way that he presents, presents his arguments is just, again, hilarious. And, you know, he's actually on, uh, he has a show on Compound Media um, that I, I also sometimes watch as well, uh, which is a subscription-based uh online uh network and he, he does a, a a pretty good job he's had some good uh, guests on there like he's had roaming millennial on there he's had milo yiannopoulos on there as well um he's also had a uh, britney pettibone and he's even had a porn star 
uh, quite frequently. Like she hasn't been on there re uh, recently, but she's but he's had uh, Mercedes Carrera, who's a porn star, and she considers herself kind of more on the right leaning side. So of course, her being on the you know right winger mostly and being a porn star, that's like you know that's like you know whoa, you're what are, you know that's weird, you know, because you're you're supposed to be I guess a left winger. I don't know. I don't know the whole thing about being a porn star. What political side you're supposed to be? I guess you're supposed to you know suck dick and have a nice day. But um, <laughs> you know. But yeah, that's mostly who I, I listen to and watch. But um, in terms of like the YouTube, I'm sure there's others, but I just can't think of any on the top of my head. Um, but oh, and I also like to watch uh, the Joe Rogan Experience. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I love watching. Right. Yeah. Um, I, again, Joe Rogan is another person that he has all kinds of people on there. You know, he's had, uh, you know, um, He's had uh, uh, Philip DeFranco, you know, in terms of YouTubers, Philip DeFranco, TJ Kirk. Uh, you know, he's had, uh, you know, uh, Gavin McGinnis, as I mentioned before. I mean, he has all kinds of people and just the art, the things that he talks about, you know, and, and all the arguments and, and all that stuff. I mean, did you see the, he had an argument with Steven Crowder. It was like a massive, like kind of a battle about like marijuana and all that. And it was like, it was, it was really heated, but just the way that they were having the argument, it, it, I don't know. Obviously they kind of like, you know, simmered down a little bit, but anyway, I'm, I'm rambling, but yeah, the whole Joe, Joe Rogan experience is great. I love that. I love that whole uh, show. So <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah. No, I just, um, I never had really had time to actually watch that guy T. I've only seen a couple of his videos and I should watch them if I have a chance, but, um, yeah, Gavin McGinnis and McGinnis, McGinnis, if you want to say it that way. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, um, he might actually go to, uh, there's this big event in Charlottesville, Virginia on the August the 12th called Unite the Right, and him and his Proud Boys are probably mm. going to be there. I'll probably see him in a far distance, but I, I plan on going to that event, and I'll probably, you know, hopefully might get close to uh, Gavin if that's possible. But uh, last yeah. week, actually, I actually got the chance to meet uh, Richard Spencer in Nashville, oh, Tennessee. Wow. And we got this really silly uh, selfie together, but um, <laughs> I'll, I'll have to upload that online later. But um, it's quite yeah. uh, amazing because this whole um, sphere on the internet is actually quite small if, if you think about it. Whenever these there are these uh, events, um, everyone from you could say the alt right or alt light or civic nationalist, whatever you want to say it, they 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 tend to focus and all meet like as in a convention center and it's really easy to make uh, connections on that um but yeah. um for 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 that matter I, I i think it's interesting um but you you haven't have you never been to protesting have you this is all just behind and blogging online i mean you you seem to be more into the visual bases on you know, like youtube and twitter i mean you have you had attended any of these like IRL meetings yet, or I, I haven't. Um, but that would be something that I want to do just to kind of see it with my own eyes, like how it is. Especially if like protests are happening because they don't like someone's views, so they start you know trashing buildings and stuff because you know someone thinks that immigration's you know terrible. So you know, you well, know, it's amazing know. because there's always these political parties that are performed on the internet. And now mm -hmm. I, I always been joking with my friends that protesting is more becoming something of a mix between, um, how could I say, like a, a very weird anime nerd convention cosplay event mixed with some form of political. It, it's very strange because um, yeah. now all of a sudden, I, I, you know, I, I did a public speaking event with the Kekistani party uh, back in July and they, oh, they invited me. But oh, um, cool. You know, but you also have people who are, you know, re reacting against the anti-fascist action. You have people like the anti-coms, which is really mm -hmm. the anti-communist action, which pretty much dawns Antifa. Or you have <laughs> even the the alt 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 knights with uh, Bay Stickman, and they basically don shields and gas masks, and all they do is whack agitators over the head with sticks. <laughs> but it's becoming oh, wow, very animated. I'm saying you have. Uh, and that's why there's this whole unite the right thing because every, you can have believe in whatever you want, whether that be like, you know, from open gay white nationalism to uh, civic ideals or just the Proud Boys. The, the point of the matter is there's some unification or at least that people are making these connections. I find that very strange how a lot of the internet, if you make it up online, uh, becomes real in reality, how you 
perform your, you know, idea. Everything's an internet meme. It becomes political ideologies and it actually becomes real. So I find that very uh, fascinating. Yeah, that's actually an interesting uh, description of how it's it's like anime conventions because I've gone to several. And yeah, it is kind of like that. They're all cosplaying and they're all in little costumes and they're, you know, in their little groups. That is kind of <laughs> that's a funny, that's a pretty funny description, yeah. Would you say the uh, red pill terminology is accurate or do you think that itself is an internet meme? Because you, you see a lot of people going around saying, well, I was red pilled when I watched this or when I was red pilled. Like it's kind of like losing your virginity experience. I find it very cheesy and cliche, but do you think that's, it's accessible in language, but I, I, I don't know particularly if it's a, a fad of this generation or it's actually quite useful, the whole peem, pill meme. Do you, do, what do you think about that? Well, I think I think I was red-pilled when I watched The Matrix. Uh, I didn't take, <laughs> well, I didn't take obviously, the Well, but... <laughs> obviously, <laughs> but... You know, I think... Um, I mean, whatever term you want to call it, you know, whether you opened your eyes or, you know, you gained, uh, you know, you, you gained a, I don't know, what, I don't know whatever term it would be, but if red pill works, then I'm fine with it. I mean, who am I? I'm just some nobody, you know, oh, what, what do I think of a red pill? Eh, I don't know, whatever, I, you know, but I honestly think that, you know, if something opened your eyes, whether it was like a personal experience or, you know, something happened or you saw something or, you know, you learned something or whatever, then if you're a red pill than that, then, you know, be my guest, you know, that, that's great for you, you know, cause I know like, you know, and I'm sure, I don't know if you've, you know, seen about, you know, like Lacey green being so-called red pill, oh, yeah. you know, what, you know, her thing and, and her getting all these, you know, people that her that were on her side and then she made that video and they're like, Oh, I can't be your friend anymore. I'm not, you know, I don't like <laughs> you anymore just because of one thing, you know, it's, it's ridiculous. But, I mean, I honestly don't um, mind the whole red pill term. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, I if, if I mean for me being red pilled, I think how I was red pilled. If I if I were to say it like that, like again, the whole part of the problem podcast, learning more about you know libertarianism, but also kind of seeing how you no, know, especially like with presidents, for example. And seeing how they just lie constantly all the time. It doesn't matter who the president is. And even like, you know, so called good ones like Ronald Reagan or Bill Clinton, they all lie. They, they lied about something, you know. And, and, and then uh, Barack Obama, you know, so called Jesus, you know, he can't do any wrong, you know, even though we were in war every single day that he was in, you know, he was in office, but nobody's want to say anything about that. But Donald Trump, once he becomes off, you know, he goes in office, and then all of a sudden, he's the all the anti-war people. Now they all now they're out of nowhere. They come out and they're all trying to like protest Trump and you know, be all like you know how, you know how dare you whatever he's literally Hitler or something. But um, it, I guess for me like there wasn't like one particular experience that was very, it was just a, a collection of of uh, ideals and and things happening and and things that I've seen like on the TV or all this so-called fake news or whatever, you know? Um, so to, I guess to kind of answer your question, I don't mind the red pill term, but um, I am going to, I do want to watch the matrix again. So, Oh yeah. That's a good series of movies. <laughs> yeah. Well, a lot of this talk also has to do with identity politics. And if you enter any, I don't know if you're still in college, but uh, especially in the college level right now, it's uh pretty hostile and everybody is um the colleges out there i believe to make money and they exploit young kids with trust funds and parents who don't care and uh, kids are if you want to say brainwashed or at least shown the wrong way and then they get kicked out and they have a degree in the arts that doesn't really help that much in the economy unless they use it well but the mm -hmm. point is i find that uh identity politics is especially promoted everywhere and it becomes a life philosophy What's your uh, view on identity politics? Do you think there should be more of a equal stance of uh, probably equality or egalitarianism, or do you think that there should be a will to self determination and liberty and kind of the libertarian stance where people should associate with one another or who they like to associate with? Well, I think what you just said, a will to you know a self identify, identify with who you want to be, you know, because. If we're gonna do this whole group think, you know, and, and all these identity politics, like, I mean, 
Just look at the LGBT community. Like all, all these people who say that, you know, we can't, we shouldn't, uh, you know, judge people. We shouldn't put labels on them. And yet they put labels on the LGBT community. Like, you know, how does that help anybody? Um, so I, I do think in liberty. I do, I do believe in freedom. You should be free to do whatever the hell you want to do, whether you want to own a gun, you want to smoke you know, marijuana, you, you want to um, go to school or whatever. Do whatever you want to do. Um, and then like you're saying with college campuses as well, you're, you're exactly right. It's totally hostile. I'm not in college, but I see it, you know, I can see it on like, you know, on, on Twitter, Facebook, or even just on, online or whatever. Um, and, and seeing like, you know, uh, public speakers, for example, like Miley Annapolis, every mm-hmm. single time he goes to a college campus, there's always going to be protests there because they just don't like that he breaks the narrative because you might as gay. well you might as well be a rock star like Michael yeah does. It, exactly yeah so you know and, and and the thing about all those protests that that he gets it just helps him it doesn't hurt him at all i mean he just he just released a book everyone all the people that hated him were trying to like you know uh block his you know uh, I mean, Simon and Schuster didn't, you know, release the book, whatever. So he made his own publishing company, and now look at it—it's selling like hotcakes. So they they failed in trying to get his book banned, you know, just because you know it all started with the college campuses and all, you know, all those uh, protests were against him. But in the end, he won that, you know, that battle. So, you know, yeah. But um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's unfortunate because college is um unfortunate for me. I mean, I just actually graduated seven months ago, and I will say the last semester was definitely hostile when Donald Trump became president because they had a oh my shit storm over in college, and it was just... Oh my god. I, I, I lost... I, I lost... Uh, well, not a whole lot, but I lost... like I, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to name him, but I definitely lost um, a friend because I was posting a so-called pro-Trump articles, and they couldn't take the rhetoric... And I, I understood where they're coming from because I knew that they didn't like Trump and all this stuff. And I, I get it, but um, it, it's just stupid. Like Donald, like the thing about Trump is that regardless of whether you like his politics or not, especially if you don't like his politics, like you're seeing how it how it is now because you see all like like CNN for example, they're, this whole Russia collusion thing, and how they're just hammering the Russian collusion thing, left, you know, up and down, you know, left and right or whatever. And yet they still can't find, you know, 100% definitive proof on it. But and it also shows through that the media has an agenda, you know, like CNN, MSNBC, and Fox News. Even they all have an agenda. And and Donald Trump, whether he's doing it directly or just just because he became president, or even when he was running for president, you know, they were all, you know trying their best to get Hillary Clinton elected and trying their damnedest to ha- make sure that Donald Trump would never be seen on the face of the earth again. You know, that, and to be honest, I want him to w- win a second term just because I want to see those people crying in the streets because like they can't believe that the first woman president didn't become president. Uh, you know? yeah, I really don't know who's going to run against Trump in um, the next few. I mean, in 2020, I mean, I don't know if it's going to be Cody uh, Budecker. <laughs> I'm not so sure if Cody can, it's going to be weird, and I do believe it. I, I really don't know what's happened. If Trump wins again, yeah, it's going to definitely hurt the Democratic Party, and they definitely will have to rechange their strategies because I think on they're just so you know to use alt right term anti white. It's the whole narrative is anti. Well, you can you can even say that Donald Trump's hurting the Republican Party because oh, yeah. they had they had sixteen candidates, including Donald Trump, and he and he whipped them all out. You know. I mean, Jeb Bush was like the quintessential, we want Jeb Bush to be president, and he didn't even get that far in because Donald Trump was basically saying, well, you're at 3%, I'm at 30%, get out of here, <laughs> you know? So he's hurting both the Democrats and the Republicans. So, But you're right, I don't know who would run against him. I guess, I mean, they're trying to like, who are some uh, people that are trying to get like, you know, uh, Elizabeth Warren. Like, I honestly think that it's probably going to be a woman just because they want, they really want so badly to have a so-called minority yeah. as president. So that's, yeah, that's going to really, unless they get someone like a, uh, Dwayne, the rock Johnson or Mark, Mark yeah, Zucker- right. yeah, Mark Zuckerberg or some celebrity yeah. status, then it's okay. possible. I, I, I will say this. 
I, I, I'll say it right now. I do think Mark, Mark Zuckerberg will run for president because he's already shown that he's going to because he's already gotten like uh, some people for like um, – uh, I don't know. Some people that are in like, you know, when someone's running for president, they get these people to help them run their campaign, whatever. He's already done that already. So I, I, I'm definitely, I'm not 100%, but I'm about 85% sure that Mark Zuckerberg will run for president. Yep. I mean, I'm just hopefully that more uh, celebrities will run for president as I, I see it. But um, yeah, might as well. Donald Trump became president. So why not The Rock, right? Yep. <laughs> well, um, are you a, are you an avid reader, and do you actually plan on – have you written blogs before? Do you plan on writing, like, something? Because there's also a whole blogosphere that writes down ideals, and um, and I've been doing that, too, on my own term. But um, – or do you just plan to stick on, you know, tweeting and videos? Well, I would like to blog, but I think as of right now, I would just kind of like to stick with videos. But I think once, like, I have a kind of true grasp on what I want to do. Then I would start to blog, um, because I, I I did I used to write movie reviews uh, for a while, and so writing's kind of always been kind of like you know my thing or whatever. Uh, so I would like to blog at some point, but yeah, for right now I think I'm just gonna sit with videos. Hope maybe hopefully I'll, I'll say like I don't know maybe like I don't know maybe sometime during the winter I would try to start blogging, but I'm not gonna like you know say yeah that's when I'm gonna start, but I would like to try sometime. You certainly have to have a subject to write about, and whether yeah, that course. has you know something that you're passionate about or critical. I mean, I mean, especially of um, as you said, you're you're just getting into libertarianism, the whole political sphere. Mm-hmm. But um, again, uh, do, what do you? I, I'm just interested. What do you think about the whole uh, Kekistani party and the whole Pepe memes and stuff like that? Well, first of all, the person that created the Pepe, th- didn't they like kill him off or something? Like they just well, killed that yeah, character off. He, he, uh, he didn't, he doesn't want to associate with it. And uh, because it's now been memed to death and, uh, yeah, I mean, for one, I feel bad for, for that person because now they're going to be associated with Pepe forever, you know? So I feel bad for that person. But in terms of like that, that's just the whole Kekistani movement. I mean, I, I honestly don't, really have an opinion i mean have they like caused any violence have they killed anybody no they're have just they... internet people when they go in the yeah. streets and they meme irl and it's a political party about dadaism and stuff like that mm. well i mean if they don't cause harm you know like any physical harm or even mentally harm i honestly don't give a shit i mean they can do whatever you know whatever the hell they want you know so um the the kakistani party is an interesting um group because they're, they're kind of, I guess, I mean, didn't they kind of like rise like during the whole Trump candidacy, right? Well, I, I guess. I mean, it's really just comes from 4chan and then yeah. mocking the whole politics thing. And as I said before, <laughs> if you're willing to have the alt knights with the Stickman uniform, and right. you might as well have the Kekistani party of just waving green flags and saying there's Kekistani people and Kek- Shaladay is your, your anthem and all this fun stuff. And yet people get offended by the Kekistani, like the, the anti-fascist action thinks they're a bunch of racist when the Kekis are saying, well, we only did for the lols or some kind of joke. Yeah, so the, they're kind of like, so they're basically like the, the court gestures of the, all these political affiliations. Yeah, I mean, you could put it that way. If the, yeah. Hmm. But, but um, what is your uh, future plans? Do you st- plan to stick on Twitter or actually make more videos. Um, what is something in the news that is intriguing you right now? And what do you plan on commenting, commenting on? And um, I would, I would like to stick with Twitter, and I would like to do YouTube videos. Uh, you know, kind of uh, spitting out my opinion, my dumb opinions, and I would also like to blog at some point. You know, like I said, I'm going to stick with the Twitter and the YouTube, or you know, for right now. I would like to blog at some point. Um, but something that I would like to comment on, again, is just the, the whole Trump thing. Because I honestly think, and I see it all the time, I see people who, they'll say one pro-Trump thing, and then all that because they're a Trump supporter. Or they'll say one anti-Trump thing, and, oh my god, you're, you hate Trump? Oh, you're awesome. Or, you know, something like that. And it's like, no, I just had an opinion. I don't agree with him. 
that's my stance. Like it was interesting. And I don't know if, if you, um, how you feel about it, but I remember a while back, a few months back when, um, Trump ordered those missiles to launch to uh, Syria, you know, to the bomb Syria. Mm -hmm. All the people that were completely against Donald Trump, all of a sudden were praising Donald Trump and how presidential he was and how awesome he is because it was all about the military industrial complex and they want military action. But it's very, uh, but it's very ironic because then the alt right had a attack where they were anti Trump. And then all of a sudden in the recent last month, there was some alt rights being well, Trump. He's on and off, but there was. Yes. I, I do remember a few months back, uh, even Spencer and Mike Enoch mm-hmm. had this whole anti-Trump protest, and I thought how silly that mm-hmm. was because they're just gonna. I always like Trump, but I, I I just didn't understand. They say he wasn't our guy, but I, I do believe. Uh, I, I forget who wrote this. I think this was on Countercurrents, but a guy wrote that um, the alt right right now is basically like a. Um, a teenage girl in high school who can't make up her mind when the uh, jock rejects her on a date and she can't develop and it's still at a young infancy phase. But yeah, I know what you're saying. Yeah, it was it was a very interesting time because like you're saying, and I was one of those who were like, what are you doing, Trump? Why are you doing this? Like you literally were saying, I don't want regime change. And now you're like, the first step towards regime change is like, you know, provoking them and attacking them. So it was kind of, it was kind of a strange time to see all the people who were anti-Trump be all of a sudden pro-Trump and be all the people that were pro-Trump be anti-Trump. It was definitely an interesting uh, couple of days for sure. Well, I think um, we're at the end of the podcast, but um, is there anything else you'd like to say uh, about what you do on Twitter and what to expect? Uh, what I do on Twitter is um, that I try to be as sarcastic and as assholey as I can possibly be, <laughs> and um, I hope that I succeed in that. And I, and whenever I try and tweet something that I tweet myself, I try to you know be funny. And whether someone laughed at it, that'd be great. Uh, if I'm the one that laughed at it, then the 100% succeed. <laughs> well, um, I, yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's it's it's, it's at um, Twitter dot com at Shane Scalp. So that's, that's your Twitter. Yeah. So uh, it. Shane, it's a uh, nice talking to you, and I hope to I'll keep in touch with your Twitters and make sure to follow back on you. So, alrighty, thank you so much. It's, it's been great.